Okay, so today uh, we're going to be uh, focusing our attention on uh, growth hormone. Um, now, a general overview of growth hormone, um, looking specifically at what it does, um, we can kind of um, narrow it down to the following. Okay, it has uh, overall it has an anabolic function. So what it's going to do is going to um, promote growth, especially in young kids. Um, specifically, it increases the organ size. Uh, it can increase muscle mass. It could increase linear size, and it can also it also decreases fat. Um, also, because it's obviously because it's fat can be used to make all of this. Uh, the other thing that you might want to look at is in fact, it, it, it um, uh, has a positive nitrogen and phosphorus balance. So what that means is you're going to have decreased BUN and amino acid levels in, in the blood. And mostly what's going to happen is the amino acids are going to be used to make the muscle, to make the uh, organs. And so it's going to be taken out from the blood and it's going to be actually uh, put into the muscles and organs so that it could be used. Um, now, so this is the overall idea. Now, what does it do specifically? So if we look at uh, growth hormone, it has three major functions. It's almost like the insulin. Uh, it's going to have an effect on a depots. In particular, it's going to decrease a depots. Okay, it's going to um, have effects which is going to increase the liver function, and it's going to have effects, positive effect, increasing muscle. Now, the liver is the most interesting. Um, is the most interesting. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, increase protein synthesis, specifically enzymes involved in uh, uh, gluconeogenesis and uh, other things necessary. Um, the other thing that it does is it's going to increase the uh, insulin-like growth factor and insulin-like growth factor binding proteins. Um, this is going to play a big role um, as we're going to see later. So insulin growth factor is kind of like a, an extension of the growth hormone factor effects. Now, after looking at that, let's just take a quick look at adipose. So if it's going to decrease adipose, well, what, what that means is obviously it's going to increase lipolysis. And also, you don't want to make more adipose, so you're going to decrease glucose uptake by the adipose tissue. And this makes more glucose available for other things such as the muscle, uh, which of course is going to increase protein intake. And so what, what does that mean? Because it can increase protein intake and increases amino acid uptake going back to how it has uh, decreased BU and amino acids. Um, and also, of course, you're going to need, uh, also, interestingly enough, it's going to decrease glucose uptake. Now, um, the insulin like growth factor, it actually has the same effects that growth hormone does on muscle. Um, but it has two other effects. I guess it, you could say it has general effects on organs and also specifically uh, chondrocytes. And so here we're going to look at uh, when we're looking at chondrocytes, we're more looking at when we mention chondrocytes, we're going to be looking more at linear growth. Whereas we mentioned organs, we're going to be looking more at um, general growth of the organs and tissues and, and, and everything is involved. So, um, with the chondrocytes, it's actually going to increase uh, osteoblasts so that it can lay down bones and even ossification. Um, it's going to obviously increase, uh, you're going to get increased protein, uh, and that's going to require an increase in RNA and DNA. So, we're getting a lot of things made here. Um, and on this side, we're pretty much getting the same thing increased protein, and of course, that's going to require an increased RNA and DNA. So that's going to be your overall function. Now what, what's also important to take a look at uh, now that we're done with the different functions um, is the regulation. So how is growth hormone regulated? Well of course we know 
that growth hormone, it comes from the pituitary. And so the pituitary is going to be regulated primarily by the hypothalamus. And within the hypothalamus, you have two hormones. Uh, one is going to be somatostatin, and the other is going to be growth hormone releasing hormone. Now, growth hormone releasing hormone has a positive effect. And somatostatin is going to have a negative effect on growth hormone. Now, interestingly enough, obviously, growth hormone, as we already know, has a positive effect on um, insulin-like growth factor, but insulin-like growth factor actually has a negative effect on growth hormone, but it has a positive effect on somatostatin. So in, so in other words, it, it blocks it from two ways, by uh, directly blocking it and also by stimulating its inhibitor. Now, the other um, hormone that is not mentioned so far is called ghrelin. Ghrelin is actually found in your stomach. So here is ghrelin which is found in your stomach and this actually is going to act positively on the growth hormone. Now, another interesting point that needs to be mentioned is thyroxine. Thyroxine, it actually should be highlighted because without thyroxine, growth hormone can't work. And that's just because uh, thyroxine is required for the receptors uh, of growth hormone. And this explains uh, in cretinism how you have uh, you know, low, low stature um, in those patients with low uh, iodine of thyroxine. Now, real quick, uh, mechanism of action. Uh, it's going to be via tyrosine kinase action specifically JAK2 and there's a protein called STAT and um, JAK2 phosphorylates this protein and then that's going to lead to transcription and this is the same function as prolactin okay so now that we've, we've kind of looked at these let's look at things that um, can stimulate growth hormone and, and can inhibit Um, first thing is going to basically what, what can stimulate it, uh, growth hormone is any decrease in glucose, any uh, increase in amino acid, and any type of stress, mostly psychological. Um, and so, what can inhibit? Obviously, increase glucose, uh, decrease amino acids, and also you have things such as free fatty acids, uh, cortisol. Uh, REM sleep actually, even though um, this is increased in sleep, not during our REM sleep, but obviously growth hormone itself and IGF-1. Now, uh, gl glucose, just you know, just to kind of jot down what causes decreased glucose, um, obviously fasting, uh, when you're sleeping, uh, when you're exercising, so these are all things that can cause it. What will cause an uh, increase is a specific amino acid that tends to activate glucose is arginine and this is part of the arginine stimulation test uh, well what you do is you give them arginine and then you have them sleep and then you're going to measure the uh, amount of IGF now the reason you don't measure growth hormone is because um, it's highly variable it's kind of given out in pulse style fashion so measuring at any one time doesn't really uh, help give you figure out you know what's going on there so and of course we have stress so this is just going to be uh, psychological stress, uh, L-DOPA is also here and uh, apomorphine is also mentioned in this area. So uh, finally we're going to end this off with just taking a look at uh, some clinical aspects. So uh, what are some conditions that can occur with increased growth hormone? Well um, if you're a child, the child has increased growth hormone, uh, this can lead to gigantism. So they'll just be really, really big, generally 8 feet. And if you're an adult, uh, it's a little bit more milder. Uh, you just have to have hypoglycemia. Because remember, this uh, does help maintain the level of sugar. Um, now, how would you treat this? Um, treatment is going to be with a drug called a creotide. Uh, this is just basically a uh, somatostatin analog. 
But the only thing is, not only does it block uh, GH, it also blocks TSH, it's going to block uh, glucagon, it's going to block insulin, and it's going to block gastrin. So it's going to have a lot of uh, different effects. Now, what can happen if you have... Sorry, this is not right. Adult is going to be acromegaly. Sorry about that. Um, if you have decreased GH, um, if you're a child, this can lead to pituitary dwarfism or just dwarfism in general. And if you're an adult, this can lead to hypoglycemia. So I've confused that. Uh, 